she wants the freedom to express herself, right? Yeah, they're free to practice their homosexuality, but I'm not no, free. No, that's what I meant. I'm not I meant free, free to, to write a note. You were free to write a note. I'm not free to have my opinion on In one smoke. One like, Turn left onto they the always have something negative to say, like this and that and this and that to avoid the situation. But there's kids that live in the building, and you should be cautious about it. Like, why would you want to smoke around your kids? A lot of people do. They're addicted to cigarettes. My parents did. My mother and dad smoked around me. Now, of course, back in the 1960s, they didn't know how bad it was for your health, and they knew nothing about secondhand smoke. But I was raised with that parent smoking. You know, cigarette smoking is a big addiction. Do you know what an addiction is? Yeah. So you can't really quit very easily. I didn't ask them to quit, though. I asked them, could they be cautious about it? That's the two different things about it, though. Right. I didn't tell you to stop smoking. I told you to be cautious about the situation. Right. Cautious isn't really the right word. Considerate would be the right word. Okay? Considerate. Considerate. Yeah. Could you be considerate? Cautious means, you know, watch where you're going and watch what you're doing. Stand and right it's not exactly the right word for that. Considerate is thinking of other people's feelings. And uh, you would have liked them to have been considerate and not smoked around you. But they were smoking in the hallway, right? Yeah, she, like, do that on purpose. They, like, smoke marijuana, smell in the hallway. Even the other neighbors, like, when it was moving in, there was, like, the new ones. There was, like, somebody's throwing illegal stuff in here because they could smell it. Yeah. And she was, and they, um, even the lady at the office said, like, there was somebody else complaining about it, not just me. Right. Right, right, right. Oh, I'm sorry you had to go through all of that. I hope you don't have to go through that again. No, because I'm going to ask the like, tell the landlord, like, is it non-smoking? Because I don't want to be on the smoke stuff. So I'm going to be, I'm going to get the apartment that's separate, not close by like it is now. Right. Right. That's what you're looking for. Like, one, mine have that. single entrances. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what you want is a single entrance. You don't want to walk through a hallway. By the way, Amy, I don't want to walk through a hallway. I don't want to. Okay? And I don't have social anxiety. I don't want to walk through a hallway with a bunch of people I don't know. It makes me nervous. So I always get a single entrance, a left, private entrance. The right lane to turn okay? Left I don't care if I have neighbors. I can't do anything about that. Yeah. But I don't want to have to be standing there walking in the hallway and they're standing there in the hallway, you know? Mm-hmm. I, and Oh, and getting startled, you know? Or not knowing if they're a criminal or something. Yeah. So I don't like that. I don't like it. So there's nothing wrong with you when you look for an apartment, look for one with a private entrance, okay? Yeah. All right? Yep. Yeah. And just let them know it's because you have um, PTSD. Tell me a PTSD. They won't look for any verification, and um, you have to I have do a private entrance. have PTSD from my past because all that stuff I've been through, like yeah. sexual, being sexual abuse and yeah. abuse on my life. And there shouldn't be any problem with you getting a private entrance if you have PTSD. You need to let them know, even if you're Section 8, that you have PTSD and you need a private entrance. You recognize you can't be staying at an expensive apartment but you at least want a private entrance. Yeah, I need private. Yeah. And if they can't give you a private entrance through the front door, if they can give you like through a sliding door, yeah. as long as it locks, that's fine too. You don't mind going in and out of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, work with them on that. Talk to your aunt, let your aunt help you too, to get you the right place. The light. Turn but right we'll pray about it. Road. You and I will be then praying about right it for Lane. sure. You know, once we go down and on our way down, we'll be praying and on your, our, your way to your aunt's house, we'll ask the Lord to get you the right apartment. And some people don't realize I, I might have dyslexia. Dyslexia? And, yeah, and they think I'm being ignorant. <laughs> turn right I'm not being ignorant. You mean in the way that you write? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now you're not being ignorant, but you have dyslexia. Yep. And there is ways of helping you with that, so that's another thing you need to get help with is dyslexia. Hold on, let me turn. End navigation. All right, done. So in fact, I'll try to remember to let Marilyn know that she should work with your social worker when you get down there for help with dyslexia. Yeah. 
and PTSD and social anxiety. Those are all things that you have issues with and that she needs to be able to get you a um, uh, private an entrance. Autism. A pri an autism and a private entrance, okay? There's, there are helps out there for all of that stuff. I don't know why these people ain't helping me here, though, with that, because if they know I have a past of the bad things that happened, they're leaving in me as something else. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know. Probably because she didn't have anybody go with you to those meetings, you know? Yeah. Like, if you could have had me go with you to a meeting, I could have been someone who could have explained things to them because you can't you you can't explain it to them they don't know what you're talking about but i do because i have been around you and i know you're very smart and i know that um you just need some um, additional help 